Hey guys, it's Phil with the Minute Man Moment, and on today's video, I'm gonna talk about what GOA is doing for hunters in our community. Hunting is a crucial part of our American gun owning tradition, and while the Second Amendment isn't about hunting, we should still be able to shoot down any attempts at limiting hunters' rights as much as we do with our gun rights in general. So GOA and Mark Jones, director of our Hunters Outreach Program, Second Amendment Hunters, has been working to protect the Second Amendment rights of American citizens. And we are also standing on the front lines to protect the American hunting tradition. A recent announcement by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service should concern all hunters, recreational shooters, and Second Amendment advocates in general. According to the Federal Register, the Fish and Wildlife Service wants to ban the use of lead ammunition and fishing tackle on certain federal lands by 2026. That's right around the corner. This ban may be the first of many coming from the Biden administration. And so let's look at why the Fish and Wildlife Service wants to ban lead ammo from federal land. The Fish and Wildlife Service, in its own words, says, finally, the best available science analyzed as part of this proposed rulemaking indicates that lead ammunition and tackle may have negative impacts on both wildlife and human health. The use of the word may rather than does should tell you everything you need to know about the uncertainty of this science backing this decision. It's no secret that a lot of people on the anti-gun left want to ban lead ammunition. In 2014, the U.S. District Court of Appeals dismissed an effort by anti-hunting groups to ban traditional lead ammunition and announced that the EPA lacked statutory authority to regulate bullets and shot under the Toxic Substances Control Act. But anti-gun and anti-hunting groups just aren't going to give up. What is really happening is the Biden administration is caving to demands from the Center for Biological Diversity to ban lead ammunition because these groups are just opposed to the American traditions of hunting and recreational shooting. Of course, that's where all this comes from. And let's look at the facts. In 2008, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and the North Dakota Health Department issued a joint study assessing the blood levels of participants who did and didn't eat wild game meat. This study showed that the participants who ate wild game had a very slightly higher lead blood level compared to people who did not eat it. But that number wasn't statistically significant, meaning it didn't show any real scientific effect. A similar study by the Wisconsin Department of Health and Human Services showed lead poisoning doesn't result from ingestion of one lead bullet fragment in large game animals. In other words, lead isn't coming from ammo. All right, now here's the effects on wild animals. The problem we face is that the people that want to ban lead ammunition make the false claim that the use of lead ammunition in hunting causes lead poisoning in wildlife species across widespread areas. But the science they present to support their allegations is kind of suspect. A lot of studies on the impacts of lead from hunting have involved questionable sample sizes, cherry-picked data to incriminate lead ammunition, and the exclusion of unfavorable data that contradicts the anti-lead hypothesis. So take, for example, the California condor. Condors are a species often pointed to by anti-lead advocates as threatened by lead because condors feed on the carcasses of harvested big game animals. Activist researchers like to manipulate the scientific process to find evidence against lead ammunition. They like to ignore the presence of plenty of non-ammunition lead sources that are common in the environment. Where else have we seen where scientists like to manipulate data to achieve their own ends? Nothing comes to mind. These sources can include items like lead-based paint, gasoline, pesticides, galvanized screws, nuts, bolts, washers, and a lot of other stuff, not just ammo. All these items have been shown to be available and attractive to the California condor. These non-ammunition items containing lead have appeared in condor nests, their digestive tracts, and in the digestive tracts of their offspring. In 2007, California actually passed legislation when supporters claimed that condors were being poisoned by lead ammunition and assured the public that poisoning would just stop if hunters stopped using lead ammunition. And 15 years later, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's records show a 99% compliance rate by hunters with the lead ammunition ban. But lead exposure and poisoning in condors remain static 
and even increased slightly since the lead banning legislation went into effect. California's lead ammunition ban has been a colossal failure and proves that alternative sources of lead poisoning can't just be ignored. Every year, new science emerges that suggests a connection between lead poisoning in the wildlife and alternative sources of lead in the environment. It exists naturally. In short, we just don't have strong evidence to prove that lead ammunition is harming wildlife because there's so many lead sources in our ecosystem. All right, here's the economic impact. We can't forget that. After California's ban on lead ammunition for hunting, Southwick Associates determined the lead ban was expected to force over 36% of licensed hunters to stop hunting. Of course, this also helps to further the goal of every anti-gunner in the gun ban movement. They want to demonize firearms and discourage as many Americans as possible from learning to use and enjoy their firearms as protected under the Second Amendment. America's centuries-old hunting tradition will suffer if lead ammunition is banned in America. According to some sources, a complete switch from lead ammunition would result in 30,000 people losing their jobs at a $4.9 billion hit to the economy. That's huge. Also, we would expect a drastic ammunition price increase followed by ammunition shortages. Like we're dealing with that right now. We don't need more of it. Some studies have suggested 10 to 20 times increases in ammunition costs due to a lead ban. And in closing, while the impacts of lead on humans and wildlife should continue to be studied, there's not a lot of scientific evidence to suggest a widespread lead ban is necessary or justified. Because of a lack of strong scientific evidence to support a lead ban and the disastrous consequences of such a ban, the federal government has no scientific justification to ban lead ammunition at this time. All right, that's it for this week's Minute Man Moment. Please be sure to subscribe and like, and let me know what you think about the ammunition ban in the comments below.